and we're back. This time, we're back in the Mustang. Now, a few days ago, or a couple of days ago, you'll have watched a video, hopefully, with um, with regards to changing the cam position sensor on the engine of this Mustang, 3.8 V6, due to the fact that the check engine light had come on, causing it to fail its MOT, because the check engine light was on. Now, I ran the code, and the code said it was the cam position sensor that was causing the problem. So you've seen in the video, we changed that, the light went out, everything was good. Now, I did promise there'd be an update video if the light came back on. And the light came back on again. So, fiddled about with it, it's come up with the exact same code again, camshaft position sensor. Unfortunately, uh, I needed the car to be MOT'd because, as, I, as you know, it's not mine. And uh, the owner needed it to be on the road because it's a daily driver for them. So I had a bit of an issue. So I posted on uh, on social media, and I think I said so in the previous video as well, that if anybody knew what could be causing it, or if it was anything else that was going to be a problem, if they could let us know. And one person that I know did send me some valuable information with regards to MOTs and the check engine light. According to the rules and regulations of the MOT test, if a car is first used on or after the 1st of July 2003, the check engine light or the engine management light, the EML, or the malfunction indication lamp, the MIL, whatever you want to call it, it's a check engine light. If that's on, on a car that is registered and used before the 1st of July 2003, the check engine light itself is not part of the MOT. So legally, your car can pass an MOT with the check engine light or the EML or the IML, uh, the MIL, whatever you want to call it. Your car can pass the MOT with that light on if it was first registered and used before the 1st of July 2003. I'll put a quick photo up here so you can read it for yourself and I'll also include a link in the description below to uh, a website online where you can download the full information of all of the MOT rules and regulations in the UK so you know what you're looking at when it comes to having your car MOT, you'll know what to test, what not to test or what to check and what not to check so that every time you go for MOT you can get a, a clean pass. Over here in the UK, we have an annual test, or well, it's an annual safety test. Uh, if you're outside the, the UK, obviously you may have the same thing, but it may be slightly different or called something different where you are. Ours is named after the Ministry of Transport, hence MOT. Now, basically what that is, it's meant to be, or it should be, construction and use. And obviously, um, safety aspect uh, is the engine running all right, emissions, etc., etc., depending on the age of the vehicle. If over here in the UK you have a vehicle that is over 40 years old and it's registered as being a historic vehicle, then you're MOT exempt or you can have personal choice as to whether you have your car MOT'd or not. If your car is not registered as a historic vehicle though, it needs an MOT every 12 months at the moment. Obviously, I'm not condoning that you should drive your car with the check engine light on permanently. They can cause issues. The, engine, the, the light comes on to make you aware of something that's wrong somewhere in the car. Uh, at most, it can cause a bit of a delay in you getting to where you go. If it, uh, at most, it can cause a bit of a delay in getting to where you're going if the car breaks down because of the check engine light. At worst, it's going to give you a huge repair bill depending on what the fault is. So, whilst I'm not condoning that you ignore the check engine light and you drive the car around with it on permanently, if it comes to the, a couple of days before your MOT and the light comes on, if your car is registered or used before 2003 you obviously don't need to worry about it failing the MOT because the check engine light's on, but obviously you should still get the fault repaired as soon as possible and make sure that the light goes out so the car's running as it should do. In my case, uh, with the light coming back on again, once again, it's showing up that it's a camshaft position sensor. Now, the sensor that I put in, the replacement one that I put in, it wasn't a new one that I had bought. It was one that came with the car. Now, it was rattling around in the back of the boot. It wasn't in a box or a bag. So it could be damaged, it could be faulty, there could be some dirt in it or something like that. So I'm going to buy another one, I'm going to get a new one, I'm going to put the new one on the car and we'll see if that makes any difference. Hopefully that will solve the problem this time round. But for the meantime, at least now the car's got an MOT and it can be driven on the road. The check engine light being on at the moment with a camshaft position sensor issue doesn't seem to be causing any problems. It starts up fine, it drives fine, so it's all good for now. But obviously I will get the, uh, the new part and I'll get that installed and as soon as that comes, I'll, uh, I'll make a video and let you know whether that time when the light goes out, if it stays out and that's the end of the problem, or if there's any more issues. Now don't go giving your local MOT guy that you go to for all your, for all your MOTs a hard time over this. It's not their fault, they're just doing their job. 
the way it works, the computer that they use in the MOT centres over here in the UK, the computer works on the date that the vehicle you're having an MOT done on was first registered in the UK. So whether that's a British car or an American car you've imported or a German car you've imported or a Japanese car you've imported, whatever you've imported, if it was first registered and used in another country before July the 1st, 2003, the check engine light is not going to be part of the MOT on that car. But when the MOT inspector goes to plug it into the computer, or when the, when the MOT inspector sets the computer up to MOT the car, it will come up saying it was first registered on whatever day it was first registered over here. So as an example, this is a 1996 Ford Mustang that was first used and registered in America in 1996. It came over to the UK in 2007. So it was first registered and used over here in 2007. So when I took it for its MOT, my local MOT inspector that I use in all instances, set it up on the computer, ready to go. The computer flagged up that it was a 2007 registered car. Therefore the check engine light was part of the MOT. After explaining to him that that wasn't the case, he went into the computer and he's adjusted it to show that the car was first registered and used in 1996. And then the computer came up saying the check engine light isn't part of the MOT, so it doesn't need to be tested. So just explain to your MOT centres, guys, what you need to do or what they need to do. Let them know that although it may well have been first registered over here in the UK after 2003, it's still a pre-2003 vehicle. All they need to do is manually adjust the computer to show that it's a pre-2003 car. If you've enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining or if you found it educational, give us a big thumbs up, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more, uh, more video content like this. And also don't forget guys, we've got stickers available, uh, in, link in the description below for them. You can find me on Facebook at doublezerogarage.com and Instagram at doublezerogarage.com. I'm also on Patreon and you can get me a coffee as well. Links for all of those are in the description below. I'll also put a link down there to the last video when we installed the camshaft position sensor so you can see what's going on with that one and see what the whole process involves if you didn't see it first time round. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.